Hello everyone, we're here for a new year, new beginnings, Pasha's Bereshit, portion of the week Bereshit, and um, we have to try to look at the world in a new way because the world has changed, the world is different. Since uh, Rosh Hashanah, the beginning of our new year, three weeks ago about, um, everything was reorganized and sealed on Yom Kippur and some say up to Sukkot. So we're in a way in a brand new world. And we start with Parshat Bereshit, the first portion of the Torah that we're going to read to, to, tomorrow, uh, Genesis 1. And, uh, and we have to, we have to uh, look at the world with new glasses, with new perspective, because everything has changed. Well, everything has changed for the ones who believe things are really changing. Uh, and in a way, our Torah starts uh, interestingly with two stories. If you read the Torah, the, the Bible from the beginning, you can see that first there's one story of creation, and then it stopped, right? After the seventh day, and God finished the seventh day and blessed it. And then it starts, and it goes again. It starts not from the very beginning, but it goes back, backward, so to speak, uh, in time uh, with the story of Adam, the first man, and what happened. So this really two story of creation. And in a way, this is the global story. We go from a class level, a, a global level, universal level. And then it goes into a specific um, level. Uh, it's more focused on uh, Adam and the story of humankind. So in a way, it's as if to say that you have nature, you have the whole world. And then we have a specific focus on the few individuals in the world who might make a difference. Um, so we have to understand right away from the first verse the first verse contains everything all the secrets of the world and uh, even everything is in the first word uh, that's why we compare uh, you know at least i like to compare the big bang to the big bet of bereshit it's a big bet big uh, letter from the very beginning in all the torah scrolls and in, in my opinion it's a hint to the big bang and um, and therefore everything is contained in that in Kabbalah it says that the world started with uh, the, the 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 size of a grain of uh, rice and um, and that's how the Big Bang started it started from a very small place atom or whatever you want to describe it you can look into uh, f science and physics what they how they explain it but every all the energy was concentrated and it, it, Flowed and expanded from that. So the idea is that Bereshit bara Elokim et Hashem v'Taretz. In the beginning of Elokim creating heaven and earth, Elokim is one of the names of God um, connected to power, the power of the world, as if to say that the powers that are in the world create heaven and earth, so to speak. God send powers. God, who is God? God doesn't have a name. But God gave a few names to understand the different levels into, uh, with which he interacts with us. So, one of the highest names that is used is Yud Kei Vav Kei, um, which is the, when the name we pronounce, pronounce Adonai. We don't really pronounce the Yud Kei Vav Kei. Um, because it's too high to understand, we don't really understand it. So saying the name without understanding, it's 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 like ripping it apart. Um, not that we understand much more the other names, but at least we try to study them. There's more awareness. So um, God cre gives creates takes parts of His powers, so to speak. And he calls it Elohim. And Elohim has in it, so to speak, uh, ten powers. God sent powers into the world. Ten statements um, and ten energies, ten spheres. And he creates heaven and earth. Bereshit bara Elohim et hashamim v'taretz. Interesting, the word Elohim is the same numerical value, gematria, as Hateva. 
86, uh, which gives us an interesting outlook at really how God is everywhere, everything. Everything you see, nature, everything around us, all the atoms, the electrons, the photons, all the energy that is around us is Elohim, or at least is shaped by Elohim. Elohim is the root of all those powers. And um, we human beings also are called Selem Elohim. We're made in the image of God, of God Elohim, not Yud Kevav Kei. So what does that mean? We're made in the image of the power that created the world and sustains the world. And meaning we contain in us all those energies. We contain in us the energies with which we're, we, that were used to create the world. Um, so in me I have the whole world all the energies, all the source of the world, and therefore I have the ability to affect the whole world and I have the ability to connect with the whole world. Uh, that's why in Kabbalah they're going to speak a lot about um, that in us we have all the animals, all the elements. We're made of four elements, fire, air, water, and dust. And um, therefore... We, as human beings, have the ability to affect the entire world. But the, the point where, the way, the way I want to go really is, um, what I want to share today specifically, is the fact that I want to use the word Elohim as the word, uh, or translate it as consciousness. In the Talmud, in the Midrash, and um, in Kabbalah, in many places, it speaks about how... Uh, I'll take an example about the sun and the moon having uh, an argument about who should... or discussion about who should uh, rule the world, and that there cannot be two luminaries, two powers to run the world, therefore the moon was diminished. And then it speaks about also the trees of Gan Eden, who, the trees of paradise, who uh, didn't listen to God, uh, so to speak, and um, decide not to have their fruits taste like the bark of their trees, because the fruit and, and the trees were supposed to taste the same way. Um, and, and many things, uh, angels speaking to God, argumenting with God. God asked the angel, Nasse Adam, let, let us make man, as if he has a discussion with creation. And what's happening is that Elohim really, all the energies in the world, all those powers, God gave it a certain type of independence, just like God gave us independence. We got the highest level of independence of creation. Everything in creation, meaning has a consciousness, has uh, a system, rules, or you could say it's a science, the laws of science, and react on their own. More and more today in science we realize that um, things react. There's butterfly effect, there's... Um, reaction from the world what is laws of people call it karma laws of attraction what is this that everybody is looking for the secret of of how of what's in the world and all that really for so for example we know the plants react um one other video i posted is the sound that sunflower made and we have many videos on internet um proven experiment about plants reacting to someone who is about to burn the plant the plant screams so what what, what is all that what what, what 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 are we talking about we're talking about the fact that the world is governed by certain laws the laws of Elohim and everything has um, I would like to say AI we're so interested in AI artificial intelligence and really we have to realize that AI um, well 
but wouldn't be really artificial. Is a RI, realistic uh, intelligence, or PI, primordial intelligence, that the world has in it everything has an intelligence. The way everyone thing around us has an atom, and the atom works the same with electrons going again around it. Everything is shaped based on the frequency of the vibration it em uh, emanates. The the so the whole world is a vibrating energy world, and with different frequencies, different levels, different hertz, different whatever we can go on and on uh, what I'm trying to say is that everything really is thinking it's not thinking like we are thinking but thinking and is alive and is reacting to to the world and especially to us human being the world has a system and runs and as it's explained in the Torah th that a lot by our sages that um, technically in the time of Adam and Eve it was Gan Eden. It was a beautiful paradise. There were no storms. There were no uh, uh, a flood. There was no tsunamis and destruction. Everything was a paradise. It was a Gan Eden, a, a, a weather, so to speak, spiritual weather where everything was harmonized. Everything worked together in symbiosis, in synchronicity, in harmony. And men came into the picture. Men came into that world of Elohim, of consciousness, of perfect harmony. If you look at the creation, everything has a certain structure. Everything reacts in a way. Just to look at the galaxy and the way it's shaped around like that, it's mathematics. The mathematician call it, you know, pi. All the, 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 that the world is just a long equation. It's a matrix. And we as human beings try to understand this matrix. Soon enough we'll understand that this matrix is all spiritual too. Or that comes from the spirituality that we have been disconnected from that spirituality, from that consciousness, from the world. So we're going to call now consciousness spirituality also. The all those things are very deep to understand and very hard to understand. I'm trying to catch it myself more and more every year. Um, but I think the more we discuss it, we try to embrace it, we try to recognize it, we try to connect to it, we try to live it, we try to feel it, we try to sense it, the more the universe is going to respond to that and respond to you. Your brain is going to open, your brain, your soul is going to connect to other consciousness. Your own consciousness is going to connect to the rest of the world. And that's really why we're here. We're here to try to connect to that world. So that's why you have the first story of creation which speaks about the world has a consciousness, there's the energies there. And we try to understand those energies and consciousness and then God puts man at the... In that into that world and say, okay, now connect to that. Be harmonized with it. Rule over it. Control it. Use it. Expand it. Make it even more beautiful. Bring your own creativity, your own consciousness within that. Affect through your consciousness the consciousness. And that's really where we are going. We're going in the future. The future is about being able to understand that we can speak to the stars and we can speak to the trees and we speak to the plants. People already do that since the beginning of creation. It's because now we're so caught up in technology, we forget with science and industrialization, we forget the idea that really all that is, um, is the life that we're connected with at the beginning, but we somehow fell from it. The sim of Adam was thinking that he was not that powerful. He didn't have so much control. That he was um, not really independent. And we got caught up into, you know, not believing that we affect the world. Not believing that we are so powerful in affecting the world. How many people have really done incredible things and changed the face of the world with certain thoughts? Einstein, Gandhi, Karl Marx, Moses, Paro, 
all whatever any president they all affected the world on certain level and the whole world was shaped by their thoughts and all that and we're only talking about thoughts we can talk about what they did with science how they affected the world and the world reacts the world now has tsunamis the world has storms the world has hurricanes earthquake and what the Torah is teaching is and our rabbis are emphasizing is that we did that we do that we destroy the world we create the world just Adam and like Adam and Eve but Adam and Eve what did they do what did humanity do they went to hide behind the trees they went to hide because they were scared of their power of their Elohim powers really we should say Elohim powers because there's God Elohim that we can't pronounce but we are called Elohim it says judges I call Elohim. We are powerful beings, super powerful, superheroes, superhuman. But we have to go back to it. We have to reconnect to it. We should not be afraid of it. And that's what all of Genesis is all this time of uh, Rosh Hashanah, Yom Kippur, Sukkot. We shake Lulav in all directions. We say, God, forgive us, which we. We believe that we can recreate the world. We can cut our movie and start from scratch. We can really transform the world. So we are energy being, consciousness being. And we have to go back into meditation, into believing that our words and our thoughts, our um, consciousness has power and that we really affect the world. And fix Adam and Rishon's sin. Because we're still suffering from it. Stop being shy. Stop being naive. You affect the world. The first world reacts to you. You affect people. You destroy people. Through your words, through your actions. We kill people. We take out lives. We have the power to take out a life by killing someone. Just that is crazy. Isn't God in control to, take, to give a life who take out a life? Yeah, but God gave you that power too. It's crazy if you want, if you, if, if you realize. So we have to realize we are, we are powerful. We are creators also. And God wants us to be aware of that. And if we're aware of that, we'll be able to connect to the consciousness of the world. And if we're able to connect to Elohim, the consciousness of the world, all the powers that is in the world, then we be able to connect our Tzalem Elohim, which in the root, at the root of it, at the root of Elohim, Bereshit by Elohim, before the Bet is an Aleph. Aleph for Aluf, the teacher, the creator of the world. For God, Yud Kei Vav Kei, or Ekie. Ekie Asha Ekie, I am who I am, I will be who I would be. Because there's nothing that we can know who he is. He will just show you different faces of himself. Because God is everything. But God ultimately is the ultimate consciousness that we have to connect to. So as we start the year, Genesis, Bereshit, we have to think differently. We have to think, we have to learn to meditate all the time, being aware that everything in, around us speaks to us, sends vibrations, sends energy, sends messages and we can be in touch with that and we have to live with that and we have to feel that everything I do affects the world. Every person I encounter is a chance to make the world a better place. Every action I do is a chance to repair the world. So this my friend I think is, is, is the beginning, is the beginning and where we have to start with. And the rest of the Torah is just the unfolding of all the mistakes we have done, all the ways we have used mis um, consciousness for the good and for the bad. The one like Av Avraham Avinu who learned to master it and was able to be in touch with the source of all consciousness. So I encourage you to try to be in touch with the world. Try to connect to the world. I know it sounds very spiritual, not down to earth maybe, but 
this is what the world needs. And when we pray especially, try to really feel that you affect the entire world. When we pray the Amida, you have to understand that the Siddur and the Amida, the Shmonesre, are words, coded words that enables us to affect the entire world. We, they are inside connected to when we say Baruch, Ata, Adonai, and the rest of the verse. When we say Adonai, we connect to different Sfirot, different energies connected to the beginning of creation. There are 10 vowels, and those 10 vowels under the name Yud Ke Vav Ke um, correspond to the 10 energies, and we are able to affect the entire world. So we have to be aware, and um, we have to make a difference. And if you go in the world understanding that nothing is random, that there is a system, and then you are able to connect to the system and you are able to override the system, you are able to affect the system and spiritual and physical and that the world will be changed with that system and then now we are in a new world order this year where we can actually bring Moshiach, we can fix the entire world, we can con all connect universally to all that system, connect to the consciousness of the entire world, of all humanity, then we are on for an amazing ride. Because the end of humanity is going to be the beginning of a newer humanity. Um, and uh, I, I, sound like, I, I feel like I sound like a crazy guy, but uh, it's, uh, it's really not. It's all really science. It's all really spirituality. It's all what the Torah has been teaching for the five, past 5,000 5, years, 3,000 years with a book. Um, so... I encourage all of you to th think of those things, of all what I said. Um, those are things that need to be repeated in your mind again and again, try to understand it. And um, if you are in that, you're going to see Hashgachah Pratis. You're going to go from Hashgachah Klalit, the way Hashem runs the world with all those laws and all that. And you're going to see, by being aware that you're going to have Hashgachah Pratis, you're going to see things manifest in your life that shows you that the world reacts to you. And that's when we we live we start living with God. We start realizing that God is answering back. That Mother Nature, that Elohim, and at the root of all of that, Hashem, the energy, the source of all energy, is responding. At the beginning we thought that dark matter that that there was empty space. That there were before dark matter there was empty space, and we realized that empty space is not empty. And we thought that everything was random, that the world was just, you know, empty and moving in a certain way. And then we realized, no, the world is actually expanding and moving in a certain way. And dark matter already is running the show, so to speak. All that empty black, dark space, all the unconsciousness, all the hidden things in the world really are moving and directing everything. And the shape of the world comes from it. Um... That's the fascinating part of quantum physics. And the quantum physics telling us everything depends, all of everything is shaped and transformed and perceived by the way we look at the world and perceive it and the way our, we, we consciously think of it. So, enough of uh, all that. It's time to go back into the world now. Bereshis, we go back in the world, we take all those ideas, the Rosh Hashanah, the head of the year, all that consciousness, all those powers, all this understanding of our powerful uh, uh, ability to affect the world, and we go in the world. We enter Macheshvan. It's a little bit bitter. Mach. Macheshvan. Why is it bitter? It's bitter because we start disconnecting a little bit from that spirituality. There's danger. We go in the physical world, so it's a little bit bitter to go in the physical world, but it's what we're here for. It's bitter at the beginning, and but eventually if we keep going and we stay strong and keep our consciousness as we go in the winter in the physicality of the world as the night gets longer our darkness takes more space and the fall comes and look things look like it's dying just like the fall of Adam Arishon that happened now in fall then finally we're going to realize that we're able to stay conscious even in the deepest materiality 
and we take our thoughts and we do the most physical things. We eat food, we have sex, we sleep, we do exercise and do all types of physical things and we're still connected to our soul, our spirituality, God. And uh, that's, that's what the human is, that mixture of spirituality and physicality which doesn't make any sense, it's all a miracle. It's a miracle of being able to have God in the world, our soul and our body, goodness in the clipos, in what looks away from God, spirituality and physicality. Um, and that's our job, that's our job. This is the Adam Harishon. This is what we're here for, to infuse our consciousness, our spirituality into the world. Do things with thoughts, with meaning. Do things because you love the world. Meet people because you want to love them. And then you want to expand that, what Olam Chesed Ibani, the world was created with love. All that consciousness, all that at the end, at the end, at the very end, bottom, is to be one. Unity. This is always Shalom. And we have to bring ourselves to be connected to, to love and spread the, the world with love. And love is the root consciousness of God, so to speak. It's what God is. The Makabali say, the world, the world of Atsilut is the world of love. So that's where we have to uh, be and tap into. So let us all transform the world with love, with our conscious left, lo, uh, consciousness, a consciousness of love. And if we do that, we repair everything, we'll be all united, we'll lo live again in paradise, we'll bring the world, we'll elevate the physical to a spiritual world, and it'll be one big world of love, and it's gonna be amazing, it's gonna be the highest experience that you know, anybody could have dreamed of, it's gonna be the Olam Abba, the future world that everybody dreams of, inside, deep inside. At the end, that's all we all want, we all wanna be happy, we wanna be able to feel love, and, um, and it's going to be for eternity. It's going to be on the highest level ever. God's love, which is that which we just taste here. With all the pleasure that we have here, it's all the taste of God's ultimate love. So let's do now the holy work and go in the world and transform the world with our soul, spirituality and love. Have an awesome year.